Hey, Pfingsters, and welcome to my one-liner superpower series, which I give on YouTube uh, to the launch for the launch of my new book, Python One-liners, which appears in May 2020, and it's already available to uh, for pre-order. So check it out if you love one-liner as much as I do, or if you want to just improve your Python skills and understand every single line of Python code there is. So what do we address in this video? Um, Actually, in in all these videos, this is a video series. I want to the the book has like fifty chapters and um, describes fifty one-liners to solve small problems uh, on a daily basis. Okay, and by studying these small problems, you will your thinking will uh, become more and more the um, uh, will gravitate towards the thinking of a say of a code master. So if you understood all these small lines of code, uh, all these Python one-liners, then you will be able to read and write Python code in general in a much better, more efficient and more Pythonic way. Okay, so this is the promise of the book. So if you understand every single line of code, uh, then you have a shot of understanding more complicated code projects actually. Okay, so and I've like for every one-liner, I have a small story <laughs> how, how this one-liner can actually improve your code skill and can solve real world problems and the problem we are tackling today is is kind of it's a dummy problem so i have to admit i just in the book i just just couldn't get, come up with a better <laughs> uh for more motivating um uh, storyline but so but i just tell you the story and you can decide for yourself whether you find it convincing or not so this time you're working at, on a small code project for a hospital Okay, and your goal is to monitor and visualize some health statistic of patients by tracking their cardiac, cardiac, cardiac cyc cycles. So uh, let's check whether I have some plotting. So I have some plotting here. Okay, um, so I will show you. I will actually, I will just copy like the one liner here already and then I will just explain it to you this time. Okay, so this, this is a one liner, this part is a one liner and we have this cardiac uh, cycle data. And now you want to say, so this is like part of the solution already and I don't, won't show you. So now we just plot the cardiac, cardiac cycle and we measure like one round of the cardiac cycle. And if we concatenate these cardi cardiac cycles one after the other, then you get the following plot like this. Let's make it even smaller. This one. So you have like here in the one in, in the one line, I have this uh, one dimensional list data. This can be like your heart rate or so over time. And this is one cycle. It starts with 62. Then we have 60, 62, 64 and so on and it ends with 62. And there is some redundancy. So these two values are redundant because you want to measure the whole cycle. So you measure like you first test whether the cycle has really finished and if it has finished then you have some redundant. Actually you have already measured data points from the next cycle. Okay, so and this is the idea. So, we, so you measure one cycle and then you, based on this one cycle you want to like uh, plot the predicted future heart rate. And if there is some deviation, then of course you could you could uh, then dynamically propose it to the user. So for this is like based on the based on the one measurement, you simply um, translate this measurement into the future, and um, this is like your uh, your baseline. And now you can really you could, for example, in practice you could you could um, um, control the user user's deviation from this ideal uh, heart rate and. Uh, yeah, but as you see, there's this this small um, mountain here, and this is this actually arises because of the redundancy. Because we measured two values, like these two values, 60 and 62. These are just the same. These are already values from the next cycle, and we cannot just. So if we use the multiplication operator like this, we basically concatenate the list 10 times after the other. Okay, so we have cardiac cardiac cycle here, this list, and now we concatenate this same list. 10 times uh, one after the other, okay? And by doing this, we get this um, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different um, cardiac cycles, okay? But by doing this, of course, we miss 
that we have some redundancy here. So how get we rid how can we get rid of this redundancy? And also this one is redundant. So we have like three data points, the last two and the first one. And how do we do this? Yeah, basically I this is just a repetition, a very small repetition for slicing. We use slicing, we start with the first value, we end with the uh, second uh, the third last value and that's it okay and then we just throw in this one so this is like uh, it's a very small application but if you if you wouldn't use slicing then you uh, most likely needed multiple lines to write code and of course we start easy we start simple and we become more and more uh, proficient and more and more um, advanced in our one-liners we will discuss in this video series okay so the challenge here is uh, to really understand slicing well. So you have the start index, you have the stop index and the slicing just carves out a sublist of your original list and which sublist do we carve out? We actually carve out this one, okay? So you give the start index, the stop index can also, it can it can be a positive index then you, if you start counting on the left, but it, but it can also uh, be a negative index. This indi indicates that you start um, counting from the right. Okay, so if you count from the right, we have minus two. So this value, this element is minus one. This one is minus two. And as you already know, the stop index here in in the slicing operation is not included in the final um, slice. So therefore, it is just uh, we just slice to this point sixty one. Okay, so this one is our actual like the uh, one full cycle without redundancy. So therefore we should be able to get rid of this small valley here. So let's check if you execute this, save it. Okay, so yeah, we completely get rid of it and now we have a regular heart rate. So like it may actually look in practice. Okay, so that's it, very quick one-liner. It's all about slicing. The one-liners will become more, um, um, more complicated next, but yeah, you should you should take away two things from it. First, slicing is really important for for any Python application in any advanced Python code projects. You will use slicing, and you have to understand um, a few things and a few mistakes that the beginners often make are not not considering that the end index, the stop index, this one, is actually not considered in the final slice so it is excluded from the final slice so the start index is included so this element the first element is included in the slice but the stop index is excluded so we don't include it into the final slice and then you have, can have negative negative indexing for uh, slice operations which means that you just count from the right instead of counting from the left so this is a very uh, frequently used tactic and then also you, that you can use list concatenation so you can have um, the plus and the multiplication operator on lists and what does it mean so they mean they are overloaded this means that they they can you can also um, you can concatenate multiple lists together okay so the plus operator by default creates a new list that concatenates two lists together so if you have list one plus list two this concatenates these two lists just that glues it glues them together and if you have the multipl multiplication operator this takes the original list and clues 10, topi, 10 copies of this original list or x copies if you multiply by x um, uh, together so you so you multiply a list with an integer number which yeah this means that you have like a um, 10 times or x times copy of the original list okay so you should consider this this is often used in more advanced one-liners so uh, really make sure to understand this otherwise we have used the uh, plotting functionality here which is also like quite, quite nice to see, especially for beginner coders. Okay, thanks for listening to this one-liner. And yeah, see you in the next one-liner. Bye.